Good afternoon, Botany Crew. This is Dr. Luntian with my first ever informative video. For these video formats, it will be about five to seven minutes long, and the goal is to disseminate in a simple and brief way concepts that are relevant to botany. This will be a multi-part series on the history of botany and specifically focusing on how humans have used botanical knowledge throughout history and how botany has shaped different cultures for humans. If you like my content and would like to view or listen to more of my talks, please hit the subscribe button so the artificial intelligence algorithm can lead you to my random forest of botanical knowledge. And now to our main topic, the examples of the importance of botany during prehistoric times and antiquity. I can make a strong argument that plants have been a dominant force in shaping our human history and culture. We as humans are organisms that rely on plants for food and even shelter. And more importantly, plants provide the oxygen that we breathe for aerobic cellular respiration. Conversely, plants rely on the carbon dioxide that we exhale for them to produce food. Because of this metabolic relationship between plants and humans and other animals really, ecological interactions are inevitable. What I mean by this is our occurrence, our existence can affect the distribution of plants in a habitat and vice versa. There are diverse examples of relationships of plants and humans throughout our natural and unnatural history which are a testament of how botany has been integrated into our lives as a species. Generally speaking, botany is a scientific study of plants, and the specific fields and subcategories have changed throughout time. For this informative video series, I want to focus on how humans have deliberately collected and used information to understand plants in order to survive. In prehistoric times, harsh environments of our nomadic ancestors forced them into botanical knowledge. When we were hunter-gatherers, being able to identify both edible and poisonous plants was very important for nourishment and of course our survival. That's right, botany was life and death for prehistoric humans. Hunter-gatherers had effective ancient medicine because of their knowledge of medicinal plants. This is called ethnobotany, the use of natural plant materials in medicine. For example, before aspirin, early human civilizations, such as the nations in North America, have used willow bark to fight fever and ease pain. Now, we've isolated the phytochemical responsible for this healing effect, which is aspirin, which is the chemical name for salicylic acid or the generic name for salicylic acid, derived from the genus name salix, which is the genus for willows. Salicylic acid is the same medicinal phytochemical abundantly found in willow tissue or, or mostly in willow bark. Of course, the aspirin pill that we take every day nowadays is the synthesized version. Now, going back to ethnobotany, this knowledge early on perhaps was the result of a combination of different factors. Our biological response to phytochemicals or secondary metabolites is more likely a possible co-evolutionary response to these chemicals. Let me talk a little bit more about these chemicals. Phytochemicals typically are potent and can kill or inhibit predators or pathogens, including fungus and bacteria. That's basically their function. While it may have initially a bad effect on humans, the antimicrobial properties of these, these phytochemicals far outweigh the side effects. Like I mentioned earlier, simple illnesses like fever and small infections are life and death situations in prehistoric times. Now, there's got to be trial and error with early humans 
figuring out which chemicals or which plants to use. And some of them might not be so much healing, but some of them might be effective. And this knowledge is passed on to subsequent generations. So in a way, they've used the scientific method. The bottom line is, it is always a continuous learning process for us to be able to discover and use plant material for medicinal purposes. And that's... That's still what we're doing today, even with sophisticated research methods and tools. At least for ethnobotany, early hunter-gatherer societies were able to practice this from collecting plant material in naturally existing environments. This medical benefit from learning and practicing ethnobotany has been extending our lifespan collectively up until the present time. But I think there's an even, even deeper significance for this. Ethnobotany allowed us to heal ourselves, and more importantly, it allowed us to heal each other. And the advent of healers and shamans most likely resulted in the first religions. And I think that's a really big factor in the rise of early civilizations. In addition to learning how to make use in fire, developing complex languages, these different factors including ethnobotany contributed to the prehistoric human population settling down and like i said most likely res resulting in the first ancient civilizations from the early human populations and we will be discussing this in the next video on ancient agriculture if you have interesting examples for the practice of ethnobotany which i know there are thousands of examples comment below once again, if you like my content and would like to view or listen to more of my talks, please hit the subscribe button so the AI algorithm can lead you to my channel. This is Dr. Lentian, your YouTube botanist, saying let's meet again in our next botany session.